But we begin tonight with the state of the campaign, with 54 days to go until the election. Vice President Kamala Harris held two blockbuster events in North Carolina today, speaking to massive crowds in Greensboro tonight and in Charlotte this afternoon, and leaning into direct attacks on Donald Trump's bizarro debate performance. She heads to Pennsylvania tomorrow to hold multiple events. Harris surrogates are also holding events all across the country today. It's the start of what her campaign is describing as a more aggressive phase of the campaign. They say they want to capitalize on her debate performance, and that will include releasing new ads featuring key moments from the primetime showdown. Trump also returned to the campaign trail today. He just wrapped up remarks in Arizona, a state he lost to President Joe Biden in 2020 by just over 10,000 votes. He's apparently still getting over the sting of his dismal debate performance, taking his complaints online per usual, pathetically feuding with Fox hosts for stating what we all know to be true, that he lost the debate. He's also childishly declaring that people are just starting to give me credit for having a great debate. Later, upping the ante, upping the big lie to a monumental victory over Kamala Harris. And also calling on everyone at ABC News, which held the debate, to be fired. And maybe the network's broadcast license to be revoked. Boy, this guy really hates to lose. He followed that by announcing, to no surprise, that there will be no, no third debate. I'm joined now by Claire McCaskill, former Democratic senator from Missouri and an MSNBC political analyst. Jason Johnson, professor of politics and journalism at Morgan State University and an MSNBC political contributor. And Mark Leibovich, staff writer at The Atlantic and an MSNBC contributor. Jason, you're the political scientist uh, here, and you're here with me at the table. And um, from a political science point of view, let, let's try to take Trump seriously. Mm -hmm. What is the point of pretending that you didn't lose a debate that everyone has clips of. The value of that is to inspire the cult-like supporters that you have to not give up on you. It's, it's interesting, Joy. It's not just that he lost the debate. It's not just that he lost the media battle. It's not just that he lost Fox News. He never had Taylor Swift, and now he lost Caitlin Clark. I mean, he's losing white women right and left. He is doing a very poor job of managing what is usually something Trump is good at. He's usually able to take an absolute failure and spin it into something that's like, I planned this all along, or this is just part of my personality. So this has been a real challenge for him. I'm not surprised that he says, I don't want to do a third debate, but it's yeah. indicative of his own poor numbers, because I think a more pugnacious Trump, I think a more confident Trump would say, hey, that was just a test run. Yeah. I can take her out again. I think he recognizes this is a turning point in the election. He yeah. may not be able to turn back. But he got mopped. Um, this is what Vice President Harris is doing with the debate today. This is her attacking uh, one of the things that Donald Trump said, which was one of the absurd things, which is that he, his concepts of a plan, not an actual plan. Here is Vice President Harris. Donald Trump intends to end the Affordable Care Act. And as he said in the debate, he made clear he has no plan to replace it. In fact, you remember? Concept. <laughs> you remember? He has, quote, concepts of a plan. Concepts of a plan. I mean, we're 54 days from this election. Concepts of a plan. Which means no actual plan. Uh, Claire McCaskill, she's first of all having way too much fun. Uh, and secondly, you and I both know that no woman could ever get away with saying, yeah, I don't have a plan. I have concepts of a plan, let alone a black woman. You were there for the many, many times that Republicans attempted to repeal and replace Obamacare. They never did it. They never had a plan either. What do you make of the fact that now his concept of a plan is part of Kamala Harris's campaign? Well, it was one of the many moments that you didn't know whether to laugh or cry during the debate. This man has been saying he has a plan for health care for nine years, Joy. Nine years. Beginning back in 2016, early 2016. And every time he talked about it, he said, we'll have it in two weeks. We'll have it in two weeks. At one point, when I was in the Senate and we were you know, having these votes, when we had the vote where John McCain famously saved Obamacare, um, we used to make the joke, we're getting the bloodhounds out. We're going to go look under desks and in closets <laughs> because this plan is nowhere to be found. It's not just him, it's the entire Republican Party. So the fact that he's going back 
to thinking he can get away with that. That's why this debate was so important. So many things. And when she said you should go to his rallies, what she was really saying is he's retreated to a place where he's comfortable. And the more she does better and the more she asserts herself, the strength she shows, the more he retreats into that corner. And I was shocked today at his rally when he repeated the very same things that people all over the world and all over America were laughing at him about because he was in a room full of his supporters and he is desperate to get the adulation for the, the very thing, same things that people are making fun of him about outside of the cult. It is, it is interesting that he doesn't seem to be able, Mark, to get off of the script he's written for himself which, you know, obviously I think he writes in front of Facebook while doom scrolling and reading conspiracy theories. Um, here he is today explaining why he shall not debate Vice President Harris again. We just don't think it's necessary. We won the two. I had one with, uh, as you know, Joe, it was quite a famous debate. And then we had another one the other day and it was both very successful. In fact, my poll numbers went up since the debate. And we think we've discussed everything, and I don't think they want it either. Mm -hmm. uh, let's give some data. Reuters Ipsos poll. Um, Harris leads Trump 47-42 in presidential post poll debates. So she gained. Who won the debate? Harris 53 percent, Trump 24 among voters who said they heard at least something about the debate. Vice President Harris has raised $47 million from nearly 600,000 people in the first 24 hours from the debate. It's her largest 24-hour fundraising period since the initial burst of donations when she entered the race. And she has Taylor Swift and Caitlin Clark. But Donald Trump thinks he's winning. Mark, what's happening here? Should we get a psychologist or a psychiatrist involved? Uh, yeah, I mean, a long time ago. But I mean, I would say that uh, this is the definition of someone. I mean, you would think it was either denial or spin or something. I think it's something much more than that, which is that he's in a true echo chamber of his making. He cannot hear any discouraging news. His people, his closest handlers, know that they are not going to last very long if they give him any bad news whatsoever, any objectively yeah. bad news about how he performed in the debate, any kind of truth telling about how he is. So that creates, I mean, that caters to his denial. That actually reinforces his denial. And you have more of the same as we saw today. Actually, there's no ability whatsoever to pivot to a more, you know, a, a, to a different track, which he obviously needs after the other night. Right. And it's the same way that he treated his election loss, uh, Jason. He can't admit, you know, he did grow up in the only church he's ever been to is the, the church of the power of positive right. thinking. But here's somebody who will tell him the truth and who seems sad about it. Frank Luntz, Republican pollster. Here he is saying Donald Trump lost the debate. Do you think Kamala won? And does that mean she may now win the election? I think more accurately, it's that Donald Trump lost. Mm. And this is not the worst debate performance I've seen in my career, but it's very close to it. I'm trying to decide if I want to go on record, and the answer is yes. I think that, uh, that he loses because of this debate performance. Wow. I'm going to set aside, Jason, the fact that it looks like he'd been through a night of heavy drinking and looks really upset about what he's saying. But even Frank Lutz, who's a Republican pollster, whose like, goal is to make Republicans look good, is like, yeah, he lost. And he's going to lose it, like, the whole thing. Frank Luntz clearly just raided Steve Bannon's closet. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and the same makeup. Well, I mean, Steve Bannon, is he in jail? Yeah. Okay. So his so closet is just available. available. It's kind of available right yeah. now. Um, but, but here's the thing. Republicans already saw how bad this was, right? And the problem is, rather than turning themselves into the underdogs and saying, hey, we're going to compete, you've got Trump out there basically saying, you know, like, you know Drake, after finding Kendrick has the Super Bowl, it's like, I'll, I'll let you have that, but I'm coming back <laughs> for you. Back, right? No, no, you lost. You lost already. The Super Bowl's done. The Super Bowl was that debate. You have now lost. And instead of being capable of spinning the narrative in a way that says, we're down now, right? right. ABC and the we're media were against us, but now we're going to fight back. They're yeah. basically just trying to create a new reality. And here's the thing, Joe. In a couple of weeks, we got J.D. Vance against Tim Walls, and that's going to be worse. Yeah. And so I don't know what they're trying to do in the next couple of weeks, because at this point, frankly, if I were a Senate candidate as a Republican or a House candidate as a Republican, I would be backing away from the top of the ticket because this looks like it's going to crash in a very bad way fairly quick. That's a great question, Claire. And you're in touch with, uh, you, you know, hopefully some of your Republican friends. Are, are people starting to worry that we're going to have down ballot issues, that they will have down ballot issues um, for Republicans because of Trump. 
is he now a drag on the whole ticket down the downstream? Well, we'll see. Um, I think we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, it, these are still really, really close races in the swing states where there are the battleground Senate races also. And you should know that up until now, and even as late as just a few days ago, almost every battleground state, Trump was running ahead yes. of the Republican Senate candidates. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't, you, listen, he is in a uh, position where he has been defeated in a debate and he's not being told the truth about it. And he thinks that lying has served him so well in his life using false hyperbole like everyone knows she's a Marxist. All the legal scholars wanted to overturn Roe v. Wade. Everyone wanted Roe v. Wade to go back to the states. Um, all of the, the absolutes he uses that are lies, he is most comfortable there because it's what he's done his whole life. And if he won't let anybody be around him that tells him the truth, he's going to stay in that comfort zone. And those rallies are his sweet spot. So yeah. he goes back to the tired stuff. I mean, after they had a bomb threat at City Hall in Springfield, Ohio today, he goes back to the cruel, baseless allegation that legal immigrants from Haiti are doing unspeakable things in the community, um, which, by the way, we all laugh at, but it's cruel and it's racist. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's particularly cruel to those families that are working hard and playing by the rules and grateful to have legal status in this great country. So the fact that he was comfortable going back to the same lines about them stealing pets, he said today they're taking all the geese. Now, in an isolation, we can all roll with laughter about that. But when you look at it first, he's comfortable saying it. 